Hello everyone, I'm Bart, Technic at Flobotics. Today I'll be taking a closer look at two RPA tools, UiPath and Aura, and comparing their interaction with simple elements in web application. Aura is a new RPA tool that we have been testing and we are excited to show you its unique features and capabilities. To illustrate the differences between these two tools, we'll be using Smart Asset, which is a financial platform that provides tools and advice to help people make better financial decisions. I'm looking forward to sharing my knowledge and expertise on this subject, so let's dive in. At first, let's take a quick look at the Smart Asset application. What you can see now is me performing a very simple calculation of ROI for some sample scenario. Okay, let's automate this scenario using both UiPath and Aura and compare these two. Let's start with UiPath. In UiPath, all the commands referred to as activities must be within the Use Application Browser container. This container specifies the application we are working with. To simplify the comparison in this video, we'll just quickly select the application without delving into the details. Okay, so let's define the process that we want to automate. Our goal is to enter 7000 in the starting amount field, enter 25 in the additional contribution field, and select monthly. 3.5% as rate of return and 25 years as years to grow. To accomplish this task, we'll be using six key activities, four type into activities and two click activities. Let's get started by adding all the necessary activities to achieve our goal. Now let's begin configuring the individual activities. To tell UiPath which element we want to write to, we'll use the indicate in application option. This will open up an inspector where we can select the appropriate element. We'll start by selecting the starting amount field. It seems that the automatically generated selector is imprecise, so we'll need to adjust it. In the additional settings sections, we have the options to choose the mode for defining the element. In UiPath, this mode is referred to as a selector. Although we'll discuss selectors in more details in the moment, for the purpose of this comparison, we'll keep things simple and only check the strict selector option in the target section on the right panel. Next, let's click on the blue icon next to the checked option, which will launch the UI Explorer. The UI Explorer is a tool that allows us to inspect the application's document object model, the DOM. What we see in the UI Explorer panel is the UiPath selector. It's an XML representation that contains HTML attributes pulled from the selected element in the application. On the right side, we have a list of attributes that we can use to identify our element. For the starting amount field, our selector is not accurate. We need to adjust it. Let's uncheck the table row attribute because it is very imprecise, but we can leave the tag. The star character is called a wildcard and it stands for any value, any length. It is the one approach to adjust the selector. The other option could be selecting the anchor, but we'll keep it simple. To ensure that the selector is deemed acceptable, let's perform a validation check on it and then click the confirm button when it's considered valid. We are working with an application that refreshes the dashboard with each change, so we need to use the option to simulate the deselection at the end of the action. The select at end in this case works perfectly. Okay, once we have a selector ready, we can put the value that we want to put in this field, in this case 7000. Next, let's choose another element and configure it the same way as the previous one. In this case, we'll also leave only strict selector option. For this element, we'll need to change a little bit more in the UI Explorer window. And do not forget to check a very important property, deselect at the end. For this field, we want 25 as a value, so we put 25 as a type this. Now we'll configure the first click activity. In most cases, selecting a value from combo box should be performed by select item activity, but the element is not defined as this type in the HTML code. RPA tools are flexible, so we can replace this action with the two click activities. For click activities, 
we will also use the strict selector option. Click on the UI Explorer icon and show UI Explorer window. Uncheck A name, table row, keep tag and add class and column name. Edit a value of column name attribute to additional contribution with stars at the beginning at the end and click save. Validate the selector and hit confirm. Before we select an appropriate element, we have to make sure it's available. In this case, we should expand the list. After all elements are visible, click monthly. Use the post configuration for three seconds options using F2 button. And as usual, leave the strict selector only. We use the UI Explorer to fine tune the selector as in the previous cases. Now, selecting an item from the drop-down is ready. Let's go back to the Type into Activities. Similarly to previous cases, let's define the most precise selector. Again, we'll use wildcards. Validate the selector and confirm. Click on the activity, go to the bottom of properties and check the select at end. In our example, we wanted 3.5% as rate of return, so we put 3.5 as a value in type into activity. Click indicate in application on the fourth type into activity and choose years to grow element in smart asset. Show the right panel and leave strict selector checked only. Click on Open UI Explorer icon and show your Explorer window. Uncheck Parent ID, Table Column, Table Row, Keep Tag and Add Column, column Name. Edit a value of Column Name to attribute Years to Grow with Start at the beginning at the end and click Save. Validate the selector and confirm. Click on the activity, go to the bottom of properties and check the select at end. Type 25 as a value in this field. We developed a whole sequence of activities which automate smart asset application. Let's check if everything works as expected. For demonstration purposes, let's take the calculated value from this investment will be worth results and show it with the message box activity. At this point, we'll quickly go through the configuration of these two activities. We'll not focus on going through the steps of, of defining the selector because it was discussed in the previous points. All fields are being filled without any problem, which means the selector were defined precisely and the result is presented. In Aura, the implementation of automation looks a bit different. In UiPath, the key and most error-prone step is defining selector. Here we are dealing with code but it is much more like natural human language than real programming code. Aura using machine learning and image processing to identify individual UI elements. 
thanks to which we can indicate elements not using selectors, as was the case in UiPath, but using the names of elements visible to the user. First, we need to go to the Smart Asset page. The command is very simple, like natural language. The enter command will pass the given value into the text box with a specific label. Please remember that we are dealing with a page that is reloaded every time a value is changed. Enter activity will reload the dashboard and we will not have to worry if the page is ready to enter new values. The activity simulates keyboard enter click. The next field will be filled with the same command as the previous one and keep in mind that the page should be reloaded. The selection of an item from the drop-down list will be handled similarly to UiPath by two clicks. Because we have two fields that corresponds to the additional contribution label, this command specifies to click a combo box. User interface element was detected when the first command was run at the moment, the drop-down list elements are not visible. Aura auto-detects screen changes, but for minor changes we need to force detection. We do it with the minus force detection parameter. There are ways to make Aura more sensitive to screen changes as well, but we will not get into that here. We simply just use the minus force detection to redetect the UI. The last two fields will be completed in a similar way as the first two. Let's do the same steps as we did for UiPath. Read the value of investment. Depending on if the value we want is a label off to the right, or in this case a word in a sentence, we use a parameter dash words to specify a word in a sentence, and one as a parameter in brackets to specify it is a single word we want to retrieve. Add a command that will present the result stored in the variable. Now let's check how Aura is doing with the real page. Due to the use of machine learning, identifying elements takes a little bit longer than it was with UiPath. Let's take a look at how Aura works behind the scenes. As we mentioned earlier, Aura uses machine learning to identify interface elements. In the image shown, we can see each element along with a specific type. Recognizing the type of an element is extremely useful if we are dealing with two different elements labeled with the same text, as was the case with additional contribution. By using UiPath and Aura, we successfully automated a basic smart asset application. Based on our experience developing and executing the code with both tools, we have identified some key differences. Notably, the UiPath is faster in executing automation, 
but takes longer to build that solution. The most significant distinction, however, lies in the technology applied. Aura employs machine learning models, whereas UiPath operates on the application's dome, with use of selectors. Here is the complete list of conclusions.